Broadcasting from the Allen B. LeVan NSU Broward Center of Innovation at Nova Southeastern University. Welcome to Sunshine Startups Live. Featuring rock star entrepreneurs, bright ideas, and experts on the startup ecosystem. And now your hosts of Sunshine Startups Live, Jim Ryan and John Wensveen. Hi, and welcome to Sunshine Startups Live. I'm your host, entrepreneur, investor, and startup enthusiast, Jim Ryan. It's great to be with you again on Sunshine Startups Live. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the podcast if you like our content. I'm joined, of course, by my good friend and colleague, John Wensveen. John, great to be with you. Good morning. It's great to be with you. I can't believe that you didn't use that plug to say that we are now in season two of Sunshine Startups Live. The peace sign, too. Yeah, the peace sign, too. <laughs> uh, so good morning, good day, good evening, wherever you may be listening. My name is John Winsley. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer here at Nova Southeastern University and Executive Director of the Levant Center of Innovation, also known as the world's first theme park for entrepreneurs. Today is going to be super exciting because I'm going to go on a limb here and say that every community has a cheerleader and multiple cheerleaders, but I think we've got Broward County's biggest cheerleader ever with us. Yeah, and a cheerleader for the Levan Center uh, literally raised the flag literally uh, here literally. at the uh, Innovation Center, and uh, terribly excited to have uh, Commissioner uh, Michael Udine with us today, who has been a, uh, a tremendous civic leader here in Broward County, a former mayor of my hometown in Parkland, Florida, and, uh, and we're going to talk today and kind of weave in, you've been a, a tremendous champion of small business, uh, entrepreneurship. I mentioned about uh, a cheerleader, and John did as well, for the uh, Levant Center here. So we're going to talk about that as well. And then weave in, obviously, challenges, uh, right, as a former mayor and commissioner, uh, uh, what's happening here in South Florida uh, so, Commissioner, thanks so much for being on the podcast today. Thank you so much. I'm happy to kick off season two. I see you guys got picked up for another season, that's so right. you must be doing something right. <laughs> With no sponsorship. No sponsorship. So, hey, that's a plug. We're here. They need sponsors. Um, uh, it's my honor to be here. This is a place that I truly love within Broward County. I used to call it a hidden gem, but it's not really so much a hidden gem anymore because people worldwide are starting to take note of the Levan Center. And it's just a a really cool place to, to come check out if you haven't been here. Yeah, and John uh, uh, post his debut on the Today Show, so uh, they might be looking for another co-host. I might lose my co-host to the Today Show no, no, at some no, point. I know where too. my roots are. I'll never forget them. <laughs> right, right. His agent's probably talking big money deals as we yeah, speak. Oprah calls, you yeah. said. Uh, <laughs> you're not a lot on my show, so. <laughs> no, but it's great to be here, and uh, I, and I, I'm, I'm a big fan of John's. I think what he's doing uh, is amazing. I think what the Levant Center is doing is really top-notch. I, literally, we've traveled all over the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can say that all yeah, over the did. world to promote right around. <laughs> what we're doing uh, here in Broward County. And I, I think we're a good place to be. I think Broward County is sitting right in the cradle of innovation. Um, South Florida is super hot. Everybody knows that. We're the place really where a lot of innovation and a lot of entrepreneurship a lot of small and even a lot of large businesses are coming. And Broward County, with our location right in the middle of, of the Tri-County area, we're the place to be right now. And we offer a lot for, for entrepreneurs, investors, startup ecosystem people, and, um, and just the community. So it's a, it's a big win. It is a big win. And, uh, and thank you for all your support and uh, your contributions to the, to the community. And I want to wind the clock back a little bit because, uh, you know, voters, uh, your constituents, uh, so forth, you know, we see you sometimes on the news. You're talking about the hot topic of the day, what's happening uh, within, the, within the county, within the state, sometimes within the nation, internationally even. So, but I want to, we would like to find out a little bit more about who you are, a little bit about your background. I know you're a former lawyer and uh, I'm, former I'm a, mayor we talked about. I'm a about. current lawyer. I'm a, I'm a practicing attorney. I'm the former mayor of Parkland. Um, I'm a county commissioner. I was mayor of Broward County. Uh, from a business point of view, in addition to practicing law, I served on a small bank board that was recently purchased by another bank. And I also happen to be a startup investor. I like to invest in some of these startups as they come out. I like to uh, kind of, quote unquote, put my money where my mouth is on some of these. Some have worked out. Some haven't worked out. Um, uh, but 
you know, it's something that I enjoy being involved with. I'm a parent. I have three great kids, uh, a great wife. My whole family's kind of bought into the let's let's cheerlead for Broward County, let's cheerlead for Northwest Broward, and let's cheerlead for South Florida. Uh, my son does real estate development in Miami-Dade. My other son is finishing up medical school and is very into health tech and the different kind of health tech things. And my daughter, who, who actually is out here quite a bit, does uh, public relations throughout the county. So she's involved with a lot of the nonprofits uh, and a lot of the startups and everything that's coming throughout the county. So that's me in a nutshell. I'm a guy with a lot of energy. I'm a guy that likes to get things done. I'm a guy that likes to get things done without needing to take the credit. I, I'm, I'm not in it for the personal credit. I want to see the mission succeed. And that's one of the things I love about the LeVan Center. I, and I've said it before. We're here now. I think I started when we planted the flag two years ago, and mm -hmm. I said, you know, 10 years from now, we're going to see unicorns and S&P 500 type companies that came out of here. So we're two years into it. We're on our way. I still have eight years to go before uh, someone can cash that lottery ticket, but I, I think we're going to see it here. And we did have one very successful exit, which we announced a couple of months ago, but we proved that you can reverse engineer the success of an entrepreneur through ideate, incubate, and accelerate. If you define the exit up front and you and you build fast, you invest fast, and you exit fast. And my goal is to make that happen over 24 month time cycles. And, and and we've had the you've had the very fortunate perspective of being involved before the place even opened. I mean, this was a dream four years yeah. ago. <laughs> and in the last two years, what we've been able to accomplish as an economic development engine, and just so you know to sell to the world, we through measurable data, we're now $86 million impact on the South Florida region, which will go up and up every every quarter as we start to look at the data. And I love the fact that you talk about how we've traveled the world. I have, one thing we just say, I have to side note, he's a hell of an ATV rider. <laughs> and, yeah. and the most memorable video that I've ever, that I'm, I'm never giving it away. It's embargoed. The it's embargoed. embargoed. It's embargoed. Right. My but wife has Thank it your wife for that. She owns the copyright, let's right. just say. <laughs> uh, but, but spectacular. So let's talk a little bit about entrepreneurship because as we said at the beginning, South Florida is on hot, is a hot place as a region. Obviously, we got greater Fort Lauderdale, Broward County in the middle. And there's always been this, I don't want to say fight, more of a debate between Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and Palm Beach. And, there's, and it's sort of like a hamburger and we've been the meat, but we're not getting a lot of credit for the meat and the buns on both sides of us have been taking a lot of that credit. And and in, in reality, if we break down the borders, we're one region collaborating together. And I have to give you kudos because you've done a fantastic job of bringing that, that together locally, regionally, nationally, internationally. What is the success for the future for Broward County as we move forward, as it relates to innovation, technology, entrepreneurship. And I tie all those themes together because innovation leads to new technologies, it leads to these entrepreneurial successes. And I think that we've been running silent and deep, but the, we're, we're above periscope depth now as, as a county. What does the future look like? What's gonna make us even hotter? I think that um, one of the things that, that I've tried to have a takeaway on this, and, and you alluded to it is, we're a region. South Florida is a region. There are certain areas of South Florida that lend themselves to certain things. Palm Beach has come across as like the, the Wall Street of the South with a lot of financial services. Miami is Miami. I mean, it's, it's very hot right now. But Broward, we're here and we're doing some cool stuff. And I think we just have to understand that sometimes the whole region is just labeled as Miami or South Florida. So we may not get that, that, that personal marketing credit, but we're doing it. And I think that the real uh, thing to look at is what's coming out of here. Mm -hmm. Almost uh, $100 billion so far in economic impact that's gonna increase every year and have a multiplier effect. Jobs are coming out of here. I was just in Tallahassee yesterday and I was with uh, the, 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 South Flor the US president of El Al. They're headquartered in Broward County. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what company you're talking about, every company is a tech company, every company needs AI, and every company needs the things that we're doing here at the Levan Center. So it will all mesh together and it will all work together. And I like to look at it, um, the Levan Center has this mentality of go out, get it done, you know, accelerate, get it done, make it happen, be flexible, be adaptable. And that's really how this place started. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're here at NSU on the fifth floor in what was supposed to be books and bookcases and a library. And a vision came around a couple of years ago. And we just said it before. I mean, I, 
you take Mr. Levan, you got to credit people that are visionaries and look at what we've turned this into. How crazy would this have been if this fifth floor, if we would have said, no, it's always planned to be a library, so let's just make this the fifth floor, floor, floor library. So Broward County came together, the Levan Center came together, Nova came together, the business community came together, and now look at what we have here. And I think it's working. And I think the proof is in the pudding, and I think we're going to keep seeing more and more of it. And I'm really excited for it, and I, you know, I know you are also. And this just note, too, that it is a public-private partnership between NSU and Broward County. So um, without that partnership, we wouldn't be here. Right. So let's talk about the partnership, right, because the, the government side of it, responsibilities, uh, contribution uh, to entrepreneurship. Uh, you know, we have entrepreneurs that listen to the podcast uh, today. Uh, your role, county commissioner, there are challenges in Broward County. So, because we, John just talked about, obviously, the upside, the innovation, uh, the attraction of the Levant Center, uh, entrepreneurs looking to set up businesses, small business uh, here in the county. Uh, you and I were talking before the podcast about uh, housing. Good news as residents in some ways, uh, in right. many ways, that you know, uh, housing has, uh, has gone up. But affordable housing is a challenge here. Uh, budget just been passed, uh, includes some affordable housing. Can you talk about specifically uh, the opportunities for, as entrepreneurs are looking to set up businesses, they have employees that they wanna right. hire. I wanna bifurcate this to affordable housing and then talent. So kind of talk about those two, uh, Commissioner, if you can. It, it's, it's great. And what you raise is really, you know, a key topic that's on top of everyone's list, uh, you know, all over the country, but especially in South Florida. And the reason why is we have super, super uh, sizzling demand for people to be here. And what happens when you get so much demand for people to be here? This And prices go up. We have an affordability issue in general. Housing is expensive. It's expensive to live here. Um, not expensive as some other areas of the country, but it's, it's a challenge. We need to do a better job as a community coming together and making sure that there's more housing options. And I think what's going to, and we're seeing that happen now. The private sector has stepped up. There's more, you know, when you drive in here, you see a lot of, you know, housing that they're building here. There's a lot more stuff that's coming online. We need to make sure that we're doing a better job with that. Broward County has taken a major leadership role, putting dollars into these things to make sure that there's more housing because you hit the nail on the head. No one's going to come set their business up here if they can't get their employees here, if they can't get their employees into good schools here, if they can't get good housing. And we need to <coughs> continue to do the other things that make it a great place to live. We need to have an environmentally resilient community because employees, young employees that are coming here are demanding that. Whether you believe in it or not, whether it's a political hot potato or not, the people that are coming here, they want an environmentally resilient community. They want great cultural amenities, which Broward County has, and they want a great transportation system. Absolutely. And that's what we're doing. So that brings up another good point. You think about how do we do a better <laughs> job of home growing entrepreneurs and what do we need to be able to do that? And then how do we recruit, and not only recruit, but retain those entrepreneurs and other industry sectors here <coughs> in Broward County? So if you were to look at our current infrastructure of what we've got now versus what we don't have that we need to build upon, just to say over the next five years, what do we need to do to improve on all of those topics? And where do you see this area, this region in the next five years? So I think the most important thing is we need to have better housing affordability. We're working on that. But coupled with that is better affordability in general. So let's take transportation. Mm -hmm. We are a region now that needs to have more transportation options. And we've seen in the past a lot of people are really excited about commuter rail. So we have Brightline. I use Brightline all the time. Brightline is not commuter rail. People aren't going to pay $40 to go to Miami. It's just not reasonable for, you know, a working person to do this twice a day each way. We're working on commuter rail right now. It's an important project that is getting a lot of federal movement going along. The county has done the environmental plans. We'll go on the FEC corridor, um, and we're working on that. We're trying to come up with optimal ways to get across the New River. That's the last stumbling block. I don't care whether you want a tunnel or a bridge, that will eventually get itself worked out. There needs to be commuter rail. Now, we're a little bit more out west here at the Levan Center. So how does that commuter rail really help you? And I represent most of the western communities. 
It helps because there's no way there's going to be east-west commuter rail until there's north-south. And you need to get the airport on there, the seaport on there. You need to be able to get on the FEC corridor, which already exists, down to Miami. And then we can talk about something east-west to really bring the entire county together. You live up in Parkland. How nice would it be if you have an appointment in Miami to be able to park at a park and ride, let's say, near Sunrise, near 595? Drive for 10 minutes get in this thing, and then get down to Miami on a commuter rail. It's a winner for you. It would be a winner for your business. Mm -hmm. People that are working in Broward County want to live on Brickell. They want to live in Palm Beach County. People that live on in Broward want to work on Brickell, want to work in Palm Beach County. It all works its well, way together, and I think it's important. Commissioner, I'll change gears a little bit uh, because I know that as a civic leader, um, there are always trials and tribulations and challenges. You've gone through several, um, several big ones. Uh, you mentioned Parkland, uh, unfortunately, the sad situation that happened in Parkland in, the, in Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Uh, you experienced that firsthand. You were very involved. Uh, obviously, hurricane, um, uh, COVID. Uh, you were involved as a, as a leader during the COVID crisis. Um, entrepreneurs themselves go through similar challenges, obviously not as critical and as crisis oriented, but talk about as a civic leader dealing with crisis management uh, and what has that been like for you and certainly some of them very personal. Um, it's a great question. One of the things that I've tried to do in my leadership role is to be very open and transparent. And a lot of times people joke around with me. Um, I do a lot of stuff on social media. I'm very accessible to people. People usually know what I'm thinking, where I'm going, because a lot of times I just post it right on social media. What that's done for the entrepreneur, coincidentally and interestingly enough, is I'm very approachable by entrepreneurs. I've had Zoom meetings with probably half of your startups that are here right now. And even if it's not something that I can get them with the county somewhere yet, it's just a way to start... Um, you know, start the process going. You have uh, Ed McGovern's company that was here that does something with school safety. Yeah. We've had Zoom meetings. We've it, He's approached me through a lot of the different things that he's seen with, you know, my social media. You know, when I got elected to the county commission, um, within the first year, there was a shooting at the airport. There was then obviously the tragedy at Stoneman Douglas. Uh, there were hurricanes, there was flooding, there was COVID. So it's been something where you've had to, you kind of make that, you know, the old saying that, you know, my grandmother used to say to me, you make plans and then God laughs because different priorities get shifted very quickly. I found my, my main leadership way of dealing with that is to be open and transparent. And I don't agree with people all the time, and they don't agree with me all the time. And some of my biggest supporters now are people that we don't agree with on certain things, but they at least feel they can approach me and that they can be heard. I'm not a big believer in, hey, I'm in government and, and elected officialitis and, you know, the pomp and circumstances. I like to roll my sleeves up, get things done, and show some results for what we're doing. You know, Parkland's been important. Uh, it's been eye-opening, and it's led to some important changes. We've I, I pushed full steam ahead with you know radio upgrades, tower upgrades. You live in the northwest part of the county. You have a you have a communications tower probably that you can see out of your back window. I can see it out of my back window too. It didn't make your property values go down, and you have better service in that area. Sure. So, you know. A lot of times you, you have to take the metal coming in, but you got to be consistent in what you want to do to see the results come through. As we look into the future um, and you look at industry, so right now we have defined targeted industries in each of the regions here in South Florida, the high wage, high growth sectors. Um, when we talk about traveling the world, we were in Dubai together and there was a lot of insight into what the future looks like from their perspective of some things that we can adapt from. And, and I, as I, one of the things I took away from that trip was instead of talking about industry, why don't we talk about economies of the future instead? And industries naturally gravitate into those new economies, like a gig economy, like a space economy, et cetera. And uh, if you say, okay, we have one rule today, there are no rules, and we're gonna predict what the future looks like specifically to Broward County as it relates to industry 
And I know that we've got sunshine cruises, beaches, and that's what we're always known for, we always should be a part of that ecosystem, but we're diversifying and bringing in new opportunities. Where do you think those opportunities are heading? Um, one of the things that we saw when we were there that I took away from it as well was find a problem and solve it. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, it's going to fall into place. Remember, we were looking at the one company that was doing the prototypes back in that innovation area yeah. of getting package delivery. Yeah. How is package delivery going to be different in the future? And what can we do as government to make sure that the infrastructure is in place? So you and I both know, or we, we know in the future, we're going to see a different way that they're going to get packages to us. Mm -hmm. So are, we, are they going to use drones? And then if they use drones, how is that going to interplay with the airspace and the, and the Federal Aviation Commission? So our airport, FLL, has to be involved with that. How is it going to, are you going to be with your kids at a local park and see a drone coming over your head? There's safety issues there. So, so solve a problem, find a problem, solve it, build a better mousetrap, and then the entrepreneur mentality will take over. And when we look at that, and when we look at it in Broward County, it's funny. And in, in the whole South Florida region, I know you know the Tech Gateway map that we have. It's a map that comes out every year, and it takes the three counties. I post it on my Twitter account all the time when people are talking about X. things. X now. Oh, oh, X, I'm sorry. <laughs> Twi wait, X, formerly known as Twitter. <laughs> So when you when we when I post the Tech Gateway, it's it's three counties. There's a million little dots all over of the different companies, and whenever I post it, I get a call from somebody. You missed us, you know, because it's growing so fast that they can, as soon as we print it, it's outdated. Yeah. But it shows all the different things and all the different tech companies and tech economy. And like I said before. Most companies are tech companies now. Is Ro Royal Caribbean we think of as a cruising company? I think of them more as a tech company, and they they would think of themselves as a lot of tech innovation that's coming out of what they're doing. So I think there's a lot of exciting things: artificial intelligence, virtual reality. I think is going to be a huge, huge driver of growth. Um, you can see the applications. How many times have you know? I've seen someone propose a building or a, or a project in Broward County. They're coming in now with a headset. You know, it's a, it's a cool way to do it. So I, I think that there's a lot there. I think that the entrepreneur and the, and the, and the startup economy uh, is going to, you know, get it done and make it happen. And I think when you're here at a place like NSU, it's really cool because you have all the ancillary structures. I mean, I know that's the model, but... You know, if you're starting up as a startup here, who do you want here? Well, first you want, if you're in health tech, you want every one of these health communities here. Mm -hmm. Isn't it a great way to, to, to get people to buy into what you're doing if you have them right here, if you can bring them here, if you're doing something to test your heartbeat by putting your finger on your iPhone? Well, you got a hundred, you know, thousands of, of medical nursing and, and, and occupational students right here. Yeah. If you need a lawyer because you're looking at something with a innovation and you want a patent, well, isn't it cool that you have the law school right here? So this brings it all together and it makes it exciting. Yeah. You've been really involved in the community. I see you quite often uh, from, from, from the ports to the airports, uh, you know, when there's a, uh, a, a new plane that's uh, uh, being deployed or a new boat, whatever that might be, ship. And uh, there is a role for, for government in, in entrepreneurship and helping support uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, what, do you th what do you think that is? Some people are on the fence of, less government, uh, less regulation, allow capitalism to thrive. Um, others see government as, uh, you know, to help entrepreneurship. You know, where do you see that role as a civic leader uh, moving forward in the future, especially with the dynamics that are happening here in, uh, in Broward County? It's a great question. Um, and I look at it a tiny bit from a different perspective. Broward County, as, as a, an agency, runs the airport, the seaport, the convention center. We are one of the biggest purchasers of goods and services south of Orlando. I mean, we may be one of the biggest in the state when you add up all the things that we do. Um, and there's a lot of different ways for entrepreneurs to get involved in that. You know, when you have uh, companies and startup companies, we, the, the, the whole thing lately has been around safety. How do these... How does everything interact when you call 911? We want a camera, we want a school panic button. 
government buildings were a good place to come out and you know m being able to push that through. What about the company that specializes in online finding of your bags and online lost and found? Well, isn't that important to, for them to meet our airport people? And I put them together so that they could meet our airport people. A, a lot of times the entrepreneur is busy building their product and building their service. They don't have the time right now to, in, in their infancy to get in the weeds with government. They can't do the procurement. They don't want to deal with you know all the steps that they have to do. But just sometimes putting them together with the correct idea and the right company makes it move forward in a, in a real positive way. And it becomes a winner for both sides. Yeah. The government should be buying their goods and services at the best price. And if these entrepreneurs can do, build a better mousetrap, we should be looking at it. And we're not always like that in government. Government is like the Titanic. You know, it's hard to turn the ship around. But once we do and when we get involved, there's good things that can happen. So let's talk a little bit about your own journey um, from public, private sector and everything in between that you've done. And we have a listening audience that's very diverse uh, it's actually, it's more diverse than I ever imagined when people, we, we got quite a following just so you know, and, uh, I've heard, and it's yeah, going to, it's talking it's, about it all over all the, the country. All right. right? It's going to go up after show. this yeah, one yeah, too, yeah, definitely. Right? your network. Wow. Right. Um, mind blowing. So assume that you've got a number of entrepreneurs out there at different stages of growth from early to mid to, to later. What is the one piece of advice based upon a lesson that you've learned that an entrepreneur has to take away? I think that an entrepreneur nowadays has to be an ultra savvy networker. I think, I, 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 I don't care what your product is, I don't care what you do, you have to be able to network and you have to be able to have that elevator pitch and you should always be promoting your product. You should always be promoting your entrepreneurial talent and skill because you never know where the door's gonna be open. I mean, I've done a few myself. I, I get a, you know, I reported, I get, I've done a few myself where someone's come to me and the idea has been so good that I said, I'm doing it, I'm, in, I'm with you. And some work, some don't work. Uh, I, I kind of like the fun aspect of it. I kind of like the investment aspect of it. Um, I was one of the first ones on the county commission to talk crypto back in the day. You know, who knows? Uh, We'll see how it plays big, out. I think a big question is how much Bitcoin do you still have today? <laughs> I have micro strategy. <laughs> but the Bitcoin's been going crazy. Um, but, you know, listen, a, a lot of this stuff, you I, and you got to maintain, you know, you're, you, as, a, as a young entrepreneur uh, or even an older entrepreneur, you're going to see failure. You're going to see roadblocks. You need perseverance and you need to be able to network. Uh, all of your network groups become possible winners for you. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple of minutes <coughs> left and I wanna thank you again for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us uh, uh, today. But I'd be remiss to ask you about, you know, what does your future look like, you know, in your, in your current role? You've had a number of uh, uh, civic leader uh, positions, you know, uh, <coughs> Your time as commissioner, you know, are you? Uh, what does your future look like uh, uh, for for yourself and your family here uh, locally? Um, I have four more years as a county commissioner, starting November twenty twenty four, assuming that I get you know reelected, which I feel real good about. Um, that will take me to twenty twenty eight, and then we'll see what the future looks like. And in these last four years, I want to continue doing uh, the type of things that I've been doing to promote Broward County. I like to say I want to do the fun things. So I want to come to the LeVan Center when they have space day and you see the little robots walking around. I want to, you know, do the things that promote the region as a winner for the startup community, for the residents that are here, for the cultural community, uh, and continue along that role. I want you know, I love uh, watching my kids and their contemporaries, and my kids are 23 to 27, so they're starting off. I, I, I work with a lot of their friends. I want to see them succeed. I want this next generation. You know, I don't buy into the BS that you hear sometimes that, oh, we're doomed, that whatever. I see great stuff coming from the younger generation. They do it differently than we do it, or than I do it. You guys are a little younger than me. They do it differently than I do it. Um, they do it in different ways. You know what? There are some things I don't like about it, but there are 
more things that are better than not. You know, they're 24 seven with their heads in their phones, usually on Instagram, but it's cool what they're doing. And I think that it, there's a huge opportunity and the world is becoming a, boundaries are coming down. You communicate with people halfway across the world and it's exciting. Yes. And there's huge markets that we can uh, come right from Broward County. You you talked about diversity when you look at this. Broward mm -hmm. County is one of the most diverse counties in the in the world. Mm -hmm. There's hundreds of languages that are spoken here. Mm -hmm. We are the gateway to Latin America. We're the get, you know we have FLL. We have multiple private airports. One of the biggest port in the world. A convention center that's booming. Um, we have a lot to offer, and all of these companies, when we were, uh, you know, overseas, they want to come through Port Everglades because we're the gateway to Latin America and the Caribbean. So mm -hmm. we got a lot to look forward to. We got a lot to be proud of, and we got a lot of good stuff ahead. See, I like the optimism. I don't, I don't like negativity. Right, cut that fat out of your life. It's if you, if you got to figure out the, the challenge, and you come up with the solution. That's what makes us successful. So normally on this table, I have a Rubik's cube. And I forgot to bring the Rubik's Cube today, but the Rubik's Cube is, I always throw a Rubik's Cube at, the, at our guests to ask a question. So you're very public, people know a lot about you. What? I'm gonna try to stump you, but I'm probably not gonna okay. do it with you because you got an answer for everything. But <laughs> what's the one thing that nobody knows about you that you're comfortable saying? The one thing that nobody knows about me that I'm comfortable saying. Um, I, and I have to be careful here because I'm a public figure. Now, um, I'm a person that just likes to have fun, so I have a lot of energy, except the one thing, I'm not a great sleeper at night. I always say to myself, if I could sleep better at night, it would make my life a lot easier. But, you know, sometimes when you, I wake up early, I go, my wife says, running, 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 <laughs> running, and sometimes at night, it's tough to unwind and come down. So I'm trying to work on that a little bit more. Um, but I'm really a type of person that I need to work better on that as far as for my mental health to be able to sleep better at night. So that's the you one. You and I are both the same. And when you figure it out, let me know. Cause my yeah. wife would love the answer to that one yep. too. <laughs> well, you would always have my vote because you assume that I was younger than you. So no matter what, I'm always going to be a big champion of yours. That's good. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. And that wasn't a political thing. <laughs> I had no idea. Whatever. <laughs> well, I want to thank you again for taking the time out of your, your schedule, uh, to help support the, our podcast and certainly everything that you're doing with the Levant Center. You're always here uh, helping support whether it was Space Day or Innovation Day and uh, and thanks again for everything. Uh, Commissioner Michael Udine, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. It was awesome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Remember to subscribe, like, and share the Sunshine Startups live podcast and follow us on social media. If you're interested in sponsoring or appearing on the show, please email us at booking at sunshinestartups.live.